Good afternoon from Very Cloudy Lagos. It's the rainy season and this is what you should expect. Our clouds, periodic uh, rain or lots of rain as you can see it's very wet outside and lots of cloud, very minimal sun. So how do we get solar to work in Lagos if this is what the experience is? So let's go visit our system. Since the last time we shot our video, we've added a freezer. And as you can see, even though there's no sunshine, the freezer is on. Everything is frozen on the inside. We've added a battery box. So it looks neat, everything is inside the battery box. We've repositioned our charge controller to be on the same side as our inverter. And we've added a, as you can see that, that's a desulfator. I'll open the battery box and show you what's inside. But before we do that, this week we had a very interesting experience. My crew blew up three charge controllers. Now, for those of you out there who install solar, it's critical you follow these steps to prevent you from having an expensive piece of junk in your facility. So whenever you're going to work on a charge controller, especially an MPPT, as you know, MPPT uh, charge controllers take high voltage, they step it down and they amplify the current. So before you do anything or before you start any maintenance, always turn the PV off first. So the solar has to be turned off. Use a breaker, use a switch, I don't care what it is, turn it off. And then after you're done, turn the battery switch off. So you have to have a breaker, like I do here, to turn, turn on your PV, to turn your PV off and turn your PV on, and then when you go to turn it back, when you go to turn it back on again, you start by turning the battery on, which is the breaker from the battery to the charge controller on. Let it stay on for at least a minute or two for it to go through its boot cycle, for it to recognize the battery voltage, and then turn the PV on. If you don't do that, you get noises, you get a little fire, and you get liquid dripping out of a ruined charge controller. So having said that, let's have um, a discussion about batteries and then I'll show you mine, how I've arranged it inside the battery box and then I'll tell you the advantages of purchasing the type of batteries I purchase relative to what everybody else does. So right here is a 12 volt battery. Okay, 12 volt battery has six cells. Um, this particular battery, uh, Mercury is very popular in Nigeria and um, the shelf life or the design life of this is about two to three years. And the reason why it's, that it's two or three years is because they're designed for about 300 to 400 cycles. The cycle is a charge and discharge. So you do that every day. Uh, 300 is a little, is about one year. 400 is a little more than one year. So if you discharge it up to 50%, it will last you one year. If you discharge it much less than that, then it will last you longer than a year. Our batteries, on the other hand, we use flooded batteries, and our preference are the Trojan batteries. As you can see, these have a cycle life of 1,750 at 50%. If I discharge them even less, they could give me a cycle life of about 3,000. Do that math in your head. 3,000 divided by 365. That is a huge number. So, um, when you compare batteries and someone tells you, well, my batteries, you know, I have to get four. I have to get uh, two, which is the six volts each to match one of those. You start looking at cycle lives, 300 versus 1,700 is not even a contest. This costs significantly less than this one. Now, I want to show you my connection. So I have eight batteries in total. You can't see every one of them, but I do. Take my word for it, I have eight batteries in total. What I did to make sure that I have an even charge in each bank, I have one bank of four, a second bank of four, is by connecting them to bus bars. I used individual fuses for each bank. As you can see, this bank, the red, is connected to that. That bank, the red, is connected to this and then the fuses are connected to a bus bar. My charge controller positive is connected here, my inverter positive is connected here, my charge controller negative is connected here, my inverter negative is connected here, and the battery bank negatives are connected to the bus bar. This ensures that we have proper adequate charging 
for our batteries. So instead of you getting losses due to cabling, the cables are the same length, or losses due to you completing your connection on another set of batteries, that eliminates that. So hopefully, uh, we taught you something today about how not to blow up your charge controllers, and we also taught you how to properly wire our batteries, and we also taught you the importance of buying the right type of batteries if you want them to last a very long time. So again, this is Christopher Masanya, also known as Dr. Sola, call, uh, talking to you from Lagos on a very cloudy day, and we are getting 510 watts from our 2 kilowatts in panels. Have a most awesome day, and we'll talk to you again.